The Lanchester Motor Company Limited was a car manufacturer located until early 1931 at Armourer Mills, Montgomery Street, Sparkbrook, Birmingham, and afterwards at Sandy Lane, Coventry, England. The mark has been unused since the last Lanchester was produced in 1955. The Lanchester Motor Company Limited is still registered as an active company and accounts are filed each year, although as of 2014 it is marked as non-trading. The Lanchester Company was purchased by the BSA Group at the end of 1930, after which its cars were made by Daimler on Daimler's Coventry sites. So, with Daimler, Lanchester became part of Jaguar Cars in 1960. In 1990 Ford Motor Company bought Jaguar cars and it remained in their ownership, and from 2000 accompanied by Land Rover, until they sold both Jaguar and Land Rover to Tata Motors in 2008, who created Jaguar Land Rover as a subsidiary holding company for them. In 2013, Jaguar Cars was merged with Land Rover to form Jaguar Land Rover Limited, and the rights to the Lanchester car brand were transferred to the newly formed British multinational car manufacturer Jaguar Land Rover. Topic: History. The Three Brothers This business was begun by the three Lanchester brothers, Frederick, one of the most influential automobile engineers of the 19th and 20th centuries, George and Frank who together incorporated the Lanchester Engine Company Limited in December 1899 retaining the financial support they had previously received from the two brothers, Charles Vernon Pugh and John Pugh of Rudge Whitworth. Others who took directorships included the Whitfield brothers, J. S. Taylor and Hamilton Barnsley, a master builder who sold the business to B. S. A. Daimler in 1931. Work on the first Lanchester car had been started in 1895, significantly designed from first principles as a car, not a horseless carriage, and it ran on the public roads in February or March 1896. It had a single-cylinder 1,306 cc engine with the piston having two connecting rods to separate crankshafts and flywheels rotating in opposite directions giving very smooth running. A two-cylinder engine was fitted to the same chassis in 1897 and a second complete car was built alongside it. This led on to the first production cars in 1900, when six were made as demonstrators. These had two-cylinder, 4,033 cc, horizontal air-cooled engines, retaining the twin crankshaft design. Steering was by side lever or tiller, not wheel. The gearbox used epicyclic gearing. The first cars were sold to the public in 1901. In 1902 Lanchester became the first company to market disc brakes to the public. They were mechanical and on the front wheels only. The discs were very thin and made of a very soft metal like brass. Although probably leaving much to be desired, they completely fit the definition of a disc brake, and beat all others to market by many years. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal Palace Automobile Show, January 1903 The Lanchester Motor Car Company show a number of handsome vehicles. 
The design here is novel throughout, or, rather, it differs from other designs, as the Lanchester car was one of the first English cars to be made. The engine is horizontal and is balanced in a most ingenious manner. The change speed gear is by epicyclic trains controlled by band brakes, the electric sparking is most ingeniously contrived, and the suspension is also of special type. To describe the mechanism of these cars would, however, be impossible without elaborate diagrams. They are notable for their easy running and absence of vibration. All bodies were made by external coachbuilders until 1903 when a body department was set up and up to 1914 most cars carried Lanchester-built bodies. In 1904, despite a full order book, the business ran out of money and the Lanchester Engine Company Limited was put into voluntary liquidation. After a period of management by a receiver the business was re-organized re-capitalized and incorporated as the Lanchester Motor Company Limited later that year. The 1904 models had 2,470 cc, four-cylinder, water-cooled, overhead valve engines featuring pressure lubrication, very unusual at the time, and were now mounted with the epicyclic gear gearbox between the front seats rather than centrally resulting a design with the driver sitting well forwards and no bonnet. Six-cylinder models joined the lineup in 1906. The specification started to become more conventional with wheel steering as an option from 1908, becoming standard from the end of 1911, and pedals and gear lever replacing the original two-lever system of gear changing. George Lanchester was now in charge, Frederick having resigned in 1913, and the engine moved further forward to a conventional position in the sporting, side valve, 5.5-liter six-cylinder 40 but very few were made before the outbreak of World War I. A distinctive feature of the engine's valves was their use of leaf springs, rather than coil springs. Frank Lanchester ran the London sales office before 1914. War During World War I the company made artillery shells and some aircraft engines but some vehicle production continued with the Lanchester 4x2 armoured cars built on the Lanchester 38 horsepower chassis for use by the Royal Naval Air Service on the Western Front. Post-war After the First World War the company adopted a single model policy and the 40 was reintroduced with a 6.2-litre overhead cam engine in unit with a three-speed gearbox still using epicyclic gears and a worm drive rear axle. It was very expensive, dearer than a Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost and to maintain production a smaller car, the 21 joined the range in 1924. This had a 3.1-liter, six-cylinder engine, now with removable cylinder head, mated to a four-speed conventional gearbox and four-wheel brakes. It grew to the 3.3-liter 23 in 1926. The 40 was finally replaced by the 30 with straight 84.4-liter engine in 1928. A further series of armored cars was made in 1927, using a six-wheeled version of the 40 chassis. 
For 1928, there was George's last design, a 4,446 cc straight eight. Only 126 were made before the economic depression effectively killed demand. Topic: <laughs> Olympia 1930. Twelve months after the Wall Street crash these were the cars shown by Lanchester on their stand at the Olympia Motor Show in October 1930. 21 horsepower six-cylinder Landaulet by Maythorne, 1,775 pounds, chassis only 1,050 pounds, 31 horsepower 8 cylinder limousine by Hooper, 2,300 pounds, chassis only 1,325 pounds. 31 horsepower 8 cylinder 6 7 seater Coupe de Ville by Windover's 2,435 pounds. The engines were 3,330 and 4,440 cc respectively. Their wheelbase and track. 6 cylinder, 11 feet 1 inch and 4 feet 8 inches. 8 cylinder, 11 feet 10 and a half in and 4 feet 8 in conventional 1920s shapes before the sale to BSA Group. Topic: <laughs> Sale or liquidation. Within weeks their bank called in the company's overdraft of £38,000 forcing immediate liquidation of the company's assets. Because their current premises were next door to BSA's armourer mills at Sparkbrook a sale to BSA made sense. Thomas Hamilton Barnsley 1867 to 1930 the principal shareholder chairman and managing director negotiated a sale of the whole share capital to BSA Group shortly before his death on Christmas Day 1930 BSA's purchase of the whole of the shares was completed in January 1931 for £26,000, a fraction of the value of the assets. Car production was transferred to Lanchester's new sister subsidiary, Daimler, at Motor Mills, Sandy Lane, Radford, Coventry. Daimler George Lanchester was kept on as a senior designer and Frank became the Lanchester sales director. The first new offering, still designed by George Lanchester, was a version of the Daimler Light 20, the Lanchester 18 with hydraulic brakes and a Daimler fluid flywheel. The 10 of 1933 was an upmarket version of the BSA 10. The pre-war 14 Roadrider of 1937, was almost identical to the Daimler New 15. The then Duke of York, a repeat customer during the 1920s and 1930s, preferred this less showy version of a Daimler car and took delivery of a pair of specially built Daimler straight eight limousines with the Lanchester grille and badges. Post-war, a 10-horsepower car was reintroduced with the 1,287cc LD10 which didn't have a Daimler equivalent and the four-cylinder 1950-14, Lita. The very last model, of which only prototypes were produced, was called the Sprite. Badge engineering Topic: Jaguar, Ford, Tata. 
Daimler was in decline, and in 1960 BSA sold Daimler's premises and business to Jaguar Cars who have since used the Daimler name on their most expensive products. Jaguar has moved into and out of the Ford Group and since 2008 Jaguar, Lanchester belongs to Tata Motors. Topic Monument. An open-air sculpture, the Lanchester Car Monument, in the Bloomsbury Heartlands area of Birmingham, designed by Tim Tolkien, on the site where Lanchester built their first four-wheel petrol car in 1895. Topic. Lanchester cars Topic <laughs> See also List of car manufacturers of the United Kingdom